today on Dr. Phil. A couple stabbed to death. There's no way my nephew murdered his own parents. The son convicted. You say his wife is the reason that he is in prison. She kept revising the story. Did you lie in court? Yes. A family divided. You got up and went in the living room? Yes, because I heard him leave about 3 o'clock. I thought you went to sleep at 3 o'clock. No. You see my problem here. A murder mystery. They found blood on the boots. With psychic medium John Edward. How much do you know about this situation? I don't know anything. Was somebody accused of murder twice? Yes. I feel like I'm supposed to talk about the DNA. There seems to be something that's not, not done. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Thank you very much. All right, take a look at this happy family. They look like they are all so close. But something completely tragic happened just before Christmas in 2008 that shattered their lives. What's your name? Matt. And what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. I think you got stabbed. Is there more than one wound? Yeah. And is there still a knife inside him? No. Oh, oh, dear. As it turned out that day, the couple, Linda and Steve, married for 31 years, were killed in their home. And their only son, Matt, who placed the 911 call, was accused, then arrested, and eventually convicted of their murders. Even though he sits today in prison for two consecutive life sentences, Matt has family members who believe he is completely innocent. My sister Linda and her husband Steve were a great couple. They lived in a really nice house. Linda and Steve had two children. Their son's name was Matthew. Matthew's my nephew. He's very smart, funny, likable. My nephew Matthew went to his parents' house one afternoon. Matt was the one who found his parents' bodies. Matt? He's dead. Matt, dead. Matt, calm down. I got a call in the middle of the night from my brother who told me Linda and Steve had been murdered. For those who knew Stephen and Linda, the lights outside are an eerie reminder of the dark discovery made inside. Linda and Steve were brutally stabbed to death about 19 times each. Matthew was arrested and charged with the murder of his parents. 30-year-old Matthew Riley faced a judge today charged with two counts of murder. Police believe he stabbed his father and mother. A stone-faced Riley appeared before a judge who told him he could be executed if convicted of killing his parents. There's no way that my nephew would have murdered his own parents. Our entire family stood by Matt. We all knew Matt was innocent. It only took the jury about two hours to reach a verdict. When I heard the word guilty, we nearly collapsed. Matt was sentenced to two consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole. In my eyes, this is a gross miscarriage of justice. My nephew Matt is completely innocent. He did not murder his own parents. So if it wasn't Matt, then how did this husband and father of two end up convicted of a double homicide? His Aunt Angela blames Matt's own wife, Jenny. I am furious with Jenny. At the preliminary hearing, Jenny told two different stories on the witness stand. Initially, Jenny said Matt was home with her all night, but later she changed her story to say that he wasn't. I asked myself, why would she tell a lie like that? What does she hope to gain from lying and trying to make her husband sound like a killer. Jenny knows the truth. The truth is Matt was home. Matt did not kill his parents. He was home with her. I believe Jenny 
began to lie because she felt that the police weren't satisfied with what she said and she kept revising the story until she came up with one that they were happy with. I want the world to know that my nephew Matt is an innocent man. I wrote to the Dr. Phil show, anyone I could think of that might listen and might be able to help find out who really killed my sister. Okay, Angela, this has got to be terribly painful for you. You do not believe that, that he's the murderer. I know that he's not the murderer. How do you know that? You weren't there. I wasn't there, but I was there for every day of his trial. I heard all the evidence. It wasn't just reasonable doubt. It was clear he did not do it, and I don't understand how he was convicted. Matt tried to commit suicide shortly after their death and after he had been arrested, correct? He hadn't been arrested yet, but he knew the investigation was focused solely on him. Was this because he was overcome with grief or because he was overcome with guilt? I'm certain that it was grief. It wasn't only the loss of his parents, but he, he was being evicted from his home. His marriage was falling apart. He was unemployed. Um, he knew that he was the focus of this investigation, and he just really thought the future held nothing for him anymore. You say that um, Jenny, his wife, in your opinion, is the sole reason that he is in prison facing two life sentences without hope of, of parole. Why? Well, she certainly was instrumental because Initially, when the police talked to her and said, oh, where was your husband last night? She said, he was home with me. But when they said, are you sure he was home with you? Do you think he might have sneaked out when you didn't notice? Her story began to change. These are the things that she seems to have said. Now, this is, this is according to you, the things that you recollect, either coming up in trial or that have been reported, that he was home all night. That was the first thing. Uh, I, then I thought he was home, uh, but I slept with our kids, so I can't be certain. Uh, then I heard him leave. Uh, then he was with me the whole night and day, except when he went out for donuts. He could have sneaked out during the night and come home in the morning with the donuts. Um, now, this is his own wife. I mean, why yes. would she lie? Why I... would she want him to wind up in prison? I don't think she really wanted him to wind up in prison. I think she just wanted to keep answering the question the way she felt the people wanted her to answer. Her name is Jenny, and she is here. She says she has no doubt in her mind that her husband murdered his parents. And she wants his family to stop taking his side and start taking hers. We're going to talk to her after the break. The only way that I can describe the way Matt was acting is he reeked of guilt. There's not a doubt in my mind that Matt murdered his parents. Angela says she's determined to prove her nephew Matt was wrongly accused of killing his parents, while the real murderer who stabbed her sister and brother-in-law each 19 times is running free. Angela blames Matt's wife, Jenny, for testifying against Matt, saying she made up lies under oath, putting her own husband behind bars for two life sentences without chance of parole. Jenny says not only was her testimony truthful, but she also believes Matt is a murderer. I was just about ready to doze off, about 2 or 3 in the morning, and I heard Matt go out the front door. I noticed the car was gone. Next thing I knew, it's like 7.30 in the morning, and Matt pulled into the driveway. I noticed that he had a cut under his eye. I didn't say anything to him. I was so mad. Later that morning, I noticed how Matt had done laundry. Matt never did laundry. Matt washed what he was wearing. I asked him where he had been. He said that I didn't need to know. The only way that I can describe the way Matt was acting is he reeked of guilt. Seemed like Matt was hiding something from me. 
Later that day, Matt all of a sudden had to go talk to his parents. That was extremely odd. About nine o'clock that night, there was a knock on the door. Three police detectives asked me if Matt had been home the previous night, and I told them yes. I lied to them. The detectives told me that they had found Linda and Steve murdered. They couldn't breathe. It's like everything stopped. And when I saw Matt, I kept saying, Matt, tell me what's going on. Did you do it? He said, the less I knew, the better off I was. She also said that he had a particular mannerism when he lies, namely licking his lips, and he was doing that. Matthew failed a police polygraph and tried to kill himself two days after his parents were found dead. What ran through my mind was he was guilty. Why would he do that if he wasn't guilty? I felt extremely horrified. It's the father of my children, and how could he murder his own flesh and blood? I reached out to Matt's grandfather. He was a retired police officer. I told Matt's grandfather that Matt was not home the night of the murders. He told me that I should forget that information and never say it again. I've never testified before. I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. I did not want to be the one to nail his coffin shut. I changed my story a lot. And the truth was that Matt was gone that night. There's not a doubt in my mind that Matt murdered his parents. I want to know why it is that Matt's family thinks that he is innocent. What am I missing? This is the first time Jenny and Angela have seen or spoken to each other since the trial in 2011. So, Jenny, come on out. Jenny, Dr. Phil. Good to meet you. Have a seat right here, you. if you would. Hi, Jenny. Angela? Angela believes uh, that you have told multiple versions of what happened here. And you know, Angela, honestly, I know the truth. And I feel sorry for your family. I don't think you know the truth that bit you in the ass. Did you lie in court? Yes. Why? I was scared when, when I got the knock on the door and the detectives started questioning me. And my first instinct was to protect him. And that's the truth. Well, that's when they knocked on the door. Yes. I ask you if you lied in court. You lied on the stand under oath. Yes. Why? Because I did not want it to be true. I didn't want to think that Matt had actually murdered his parents. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. And I just asked you why you lied in court. And you said, well, there was a knock on the door and I was scared. Then you said you lied because you didn't want it to be true. And I had talked to Matt's grandpa. And I had told him the information that I had, that Matt was not there that night. And he got so mad at me, and he told me that I better never say those words ever again. Okay, well, that's three different reasons that you lied. Now, you told Detective that you went to bed around 11.30. Correct. We ask you the same thing when we talk to you, and here's what you said. I was just about ready to doze off, about 2 or 3 in the morning, and I heard Matt go out the front door. So now you're going to bed at 2 or 3 in the morning. Those, when I actually went to bed, like fell asleep, and when I went to bed, when I left the living room and went into the bedroom with the kids, I watched TV. When did you go out to the living room? It was about 3 o'clock. I thought you went to sleep at 3 o'clock. <laughs> no. No, I was trying fine. to get straight. That's right? fine, that's fine. Just as you were dozing off, you got up and went in the living room. Yes, because I heard him leave. You see my problem here. <laughs> well, Jenny says that there were red flags no matter what time Matt came home. We're going to talk about that when we come back. There are a couple of theories about what really happened. 
About a month before Linda and Steve were murdered, Linda told me that someone was stalking her. And I think that stalker broke into their house, killed Steve, killed Linda, and went away. Now, while Jenny believes she did the right thing by reporting to police that her husband was gone all night during the time his parents were murdered, Angela believes Jenny was trying to work out some kind of deal with police to help get out of a tricky situation. After Matt's arrest, I was struggling, and I was trying to take care of two little girls. My life was in shambles. I had nowhere to live, and I was actually staying at a motel. I ended up getting arrested for conspiracy to steal a jet ski. I went to jail. Child Protective Services got involved because they were concerned that I was not providing for my children. Jenny was having a lot of trouble because of her living conditions with the girls and her drug use. I think Jenny felt that unless she testified against Matt, things would not go well for her. So she threw her husband under the bus to save herself and keep her children. And then ultimately, Jenny lost the kids anyway. And initially, my children were put into foster care. My children have since been adopted. I lost the rights to my children. You said that he returned home at 7.30 a.m. with a black and blue cut under his eye. And he didn't have this before. Yes. You said when he got home, um, he went in and did laundry. What was he washing? He was washing what he wore when he came home. And then later on that day, he had to rush over to his parents' house to talk. And he needed to talk to his parents about when he wanted to move in. And you said he had never asked about that in the past. If he's going to move in, he would just go over there and just move in, right? Correct. Then the boots that he wore the day of the murder were missing. Yes, they were missing. And when they found them, they were his because of the shoelaces. They They're, weren't even They were size. very unique shoelaces. They weren't even his size. Do you know what size shoe he wears? He wears a nine and a half. The boots were size 11 and a half or 12. He told police that he had thrown those boots away a couple of months earlier. Yes, he did. But they found these boots on top of an apartment building. Oh, the, the apartment building that we were living in. Right. Yes. Two years later, they found those boots on the roof of the apartment building. Right. Uh, these are the boots. They found blood on the boots. I don't recall that they found blood. I know they found a dog hair from a brown dog. They, they found a dog hair that was consistent with the hair of a dog that was in the house of your sister and brother-in-law. They said one in seven brown dogs would have that same hair. We'll talk to Matt's uncle and Angela's brother, who believes that his nephew would not have been convicted if the police fully investigated one drop of blood. And it's not what we're talking about being on these boots right after the break. talking to Angela, who says she is completely shattered, understandably, after the murder of her sister and brother-in-law, especially after her nephew, Matt, ended up being convicted of stabbing each of his parents to death. Now, Angela's brother and Matt's uncle, Greg, agrees. What, what would you like to add here? There was about 50 samples of blood taken from an extremely bloody crime scene, and one of the drops of blood from my sister's bathroom was tested and it was found, although they did an incomplete test, it was found that it was not my sister's blood, it was not my brother-in-law's blood, and it was not Matt's blood. To me, that drop of blood is uh, key. I, I've looked at the case summary here with regard to a, a polygraph that Matt took. Prior to the polygraph test being administered, Matthew admitted to the detective 
to researching polygraph tests on the internet that day. He also admitted to taking a muscle relaxer. During the test, Matthew denied that he killed his mom and dad. However, the results of the test showed that Matt was deceptive as to whether or not he killed them. He failed the polygraph. He admitted that he researched polygraphs. He admitted that he did countermeasures in terms of taking a muscle relaxer to try to defeat the polygraph, and he still failed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. He actually failed every question on the polygraph. You are absolutely unwavering that he got up and left that night. Absolutely. I mean, you told different versions of this. If, if you have contributed to the conviction of, of this man for two murders, and he will never draw another free breath, never see his children, never walk free again, uh, and, and you have contributed to that by lying intentionally or otherwise, that is not something you want to live with. That is something you want to come clean about. Now is the time to do that. I did not lie. The second will, time will I testified. Yes, I will. will you? Yes, right here and right now. I will take a polygraph test. Thank you. I did not lie. If you're willing to do it and, and y'all would like to do that, then we will certainly do that. I, I would love to do that. Thanks, right. Jenny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take kind of a right turn in, in this here because you've written to me eight times. Have I? Yes, you have. And um, in some of those letters, October 17th, 2013, May 4th, uh, 2014, uh, you said, Dear Dr. Phil, I would like you to invite a medium to be a guest on the show. If you do, I'm begging you to allow me to meet them in the hope that they can give me a message from my sister who passed away nearly five years ago. I'm actually pretty skeptical of mediums. I, I don't want to go to one of my own because I wouldn't want to be conned. Um, I trust Dr. Phil to not put a quack or a charlatan on his show, <laughs> which is why I feel this is the only route I have to any real resolution to my torment. Just like most people who write you, I am desperate. I do try to answer my guests' requests, so I, I'm, I'm going to do that. I went straight to the top. Uh, John Edward is here. Uh, I even sat down with him for a reading. And you know, I, I'm an admitted skeptic about this as well. I have a healthy skepticism about it, but I try to be open. Uh, but he is here uh, at your request. We'll be right back. A lot of you are here because you know a certain someone was going to be here today. Please welcome a very good friend of mine, world-renowned psychic medium, John Edward. All right, uh, John is uh, currently on tour crossing over with John Edward. And if you are interested in getting tickets to John's World Tour, go to johnedward.net backslash events and check out his international schedule. Uh, he also has a live web series, Evolve, that airs every Sunday. How much do you know about this situation with Angela and Jenny? I don't know anything. Okay. Um, well, I'll just let you start talking. Let's just start with Angela, if, if you can. Okay. Um, here's, the, here, here's the disadvantage that, for me, just doing this work, is that I have absolutely no control over what happens. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. But if I can't read them, are you going to get mad? Yes. <laughs> Very much so. You're going to be mad. Um, so, f first and foremost, there's no fire connection to you? Nobody in a fire, correct? Okay. Correct. 
So if I go over there in that section, is there some type of fire story in that back section over there? Are you guys together? Yeah, we're together. Okay. Say it again. We're talking about the same person. Okay, and did this person pass in a fire? Um, she was yes. dismembered and burnt in a... Uh, oh Yes. yes. <laughs> Just say yes or no. I don't know if there's a father figure to you who has passed or if there's an older male energy that's connected to me that's above you that would be like father. Yes. They're telling me to talk about somebody who literally I see, I, see the, I, see, I see smoke and fire. So I know that there's some level of that having to do with their passing um, or having to do with the connection around their passing. And I don't know if this was done because they wanted to get rid of evidence or if they wanted to get yes. rid of something on, on that level. And is somebody now pregnant? The person, the who, person passed. who died was. So the person who passed was pregnant? Yes. Okay. There's a reference to two people. There's two yes. people. Yes. So I don't know if we're talking about two people involved in this yes. case, but two people perpetrated it, two or people, two people were passed? Two people, two people have passed. passed. You're telling me that this is a husband and wife that was pregnant that was killed? Yes. yes. Did this make headlines? Yes. yes. National. Okay. They're telling me to talk to you about Scott, or Skip, or something S K. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. So she's just a friend of yours, like a contemporary? Yes. Yes. And is her dad passed, but her mom's alive? No, both, both of her parents, parents are alive. alive. No, she's with an older male that's passed, that's, like a father. That's your dad. That would be my dad. <laughs> okay. Did your dad know her? No, but so, I told him. I talked to him earlier on the other side. So you had your I own personal him, conversation with your dad and said, do I me did, a favor? I did, and I, I told, I told him to bring John our friends because to Because he's supposed to read these it. people. Yes. Interrupt the show. <laughs> I asked my dad to bring forward um, my friend. Okay, let me just say this now. In conjunction to what you asked me to do mm -hmm. here, is there a similarity like where someone's murdered or is yes. there a similarity in some case, in some way to this? Yes. So I feel like I'm supposed to talk about some, something about, I guess the DNA or something about looking at understanding DNA or maybe DNA helps to kind of point a finger at something but there's still unanswered questions. So is your case unsolved like that one's, not unsolved, but uncompleted or incompleted in some way? Yes. Okay, and I feel like I'm supposed to associate that if it's like that, and that's a, a wife and a husband that have, that have passed, um, that there's gotta be a connection that there's a couple of people that might have passed as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Who's the younger female? There's a younger yeah. female reference that they want me to talk about. They're, they're making a big deal about the younger female. The, the baby was gonna be a girl. So they know that? Yes. yes. Okay. They had, nine, they had named her, and that's the SK. Oh, that's right. I just that's thought right. of that. That, is, that was the baby's name. They already named the baby. Mm -hmm. What was her name? She, Skylar. Skylar. Oh. That's the SK. That's right. That's right. Hey, hey. Hey. There he is. Nice to see you. Who has the D name around you? His passing is shocking. I got a text message from him. He dropped dead minutes later. I don't understand why. I keep seeing the Canadian border. There's something about the, the Canadian border and the, and the top of the states. So to me, I feel like I want to go up by the Dakotas or up in that area for some reason. I lived in North Dakota. You lived in North Dakota? Yes. OK. But it was a thing my sister made fun of me for. <laughs> that's something your sister made fun of? Is your sister the person that's passed? Yes. And was she murdered? Yes. I don't understand how you could be murdered twice. Um, was somebody accused of murder twice? Yes. Why do I feel like I'm supposed to talk about somebody who's being almost like persecuted for their belief or somebody who's attacked because of their belief? Me. Sounds like. Like, do you feel like you've been attacked because of that or? Yes. And cast out? Yes. Your case is done? There's some question as to whether it's done or not. I just feel like I'm not completely finished with whichever one this is. There seems to be something that's not, not done. Even though I'm a bit of a uh, healthy skeptic, I sat down with John Edward before the show for a reading myself. I have to note that this was only after my producers wore me down <laughs> by asking me several times to do this. Take a look. Hey, hey. Hey. There he is. Nice to see you. First thing I, I always like whenever I sit down with somebody, I always like to talk about a little bit about the process just to explain that everything I get is symbolic. Is your dad passed? Your dad? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Are there two dads for you? 
I see two male figures, so to me I see two fathers. Did anybody miss a leg or was somebody paralyzed on one side? Mm, no. My dad had a broken leg at he one did. point. At he, he some did. point in his life, but it wasn't paralyzed or anything. His mom passed too? Mm -hmm. My mother and father are both passed. And one of them either passed by their own birthday or one of them passed by a holiday? Did you ever have a connection with someone that is in the media business where you didn't see them for a while and then you found out that they passed like did you like share a box at a game or did you golf with this person but I feel like he passed his passing is shocking who has a D name around you well kid kid Craddock is a is a good friend of mine it's a kid Craddock in the morning show what's the sports connection to him we played golf together did you not see him before he passed no we we were in contact that day. Who's the D? Who's the D? 
His name, his real name is not Kid, his real name is Dave, but his passing was very sudden. So you guys would meet up at the same sports event or sports whatever? Well, we, we played golf together a lot. We had a very jovial relationship. I mean, we'd tease each other about everything. He died 7-27-13. Because the last text message, I, he, I got a text message from him. He dropped dead minutes later. But I feel like you <clears throat> helped him navigate something that wouldn't be known publicly, and I don't mean health. And he's making me feel like, thank you for being honorable and not discussing that then, and clearly not discussing that now. There was a lot of pressure to disclose some things when he passed that I refused to disclose. So. Well, he appreciates that. Is there a Milton or a Miles or an ML name that's connected to you? Separate from him now. Go to your family. Oh, boy, I wish Robin was here. Can we call her? Robin to the rescue? She's got an incredible memory. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Here's the brains of the outfit. I just love I'm so this. happy you're here. I've been outside listening. Where's the place where there was a passing that's close to a celebration? My father passed um, the day after Philip's birthday. Okay, so then the two father figures in the beginning would have been his dad and then your dad. Yes. And so he said his dad broke his leg, but was there any type of remnants of that leg break? Yes. He limped all the time. He had a limp because of the broken foot. Is there anybody here that lost somebody to a suicide gunshot to the head? I don't know anyone. Nope. I'm getting that really loudly. Kind of feel like it's behind me, whichever way that would be. There's a small group out there. I know that their actions brought about their passing, and I know that there's a CRK connection to it. John Perry's roommate shot himself in the head. <gasps> That's inspiring. Wow. Who's that? Yes. John Perry is the director. That's my roommate killed himself because his last name was Krieger. And then you weren't in a band with him, were you? I was in a band with him, yes. Yeah. I don't know if you're doing any type of consulting, political, if you're spending quality time at the White House, but there's some type of political, energetic thing coming up around you. I've been to private meetings in Washington. So you're not announcing your candidacy for 2016 right now. That's <laughs> not what we're doing. Gotcha. You won't believe uh, what happened with John before the show, right after the break. So I thought while you were hanging out waiting, I'd come out and maybe answer some of your questions, maybe talk to some of you now. Is that okay? Is that yes? Thank you. I want to go over there. Are you Linda? No, my mother-in-law was a Linda. Has she passed? Linda's here. Because um, Linda's making me feel like I need to say Linda to you. Somebody's telling me if they passed in the line of duty, somebody in this section, it's connected to the person who has a C and an M name. I have an M and K Mark Kemp. Shot. But he died in the line of duty. He died in the line of duty. Uniform connection? He was a police officer, a canine officer. And somebody had either congestive heart failure or somebody had some type of, where well, they filled up with fluids. Asthma and they overinflated his lungs and he died. That's him. Okay, so this is his way of coming through. Now, you said he was a canine. He was a canine officer. Okay, did one <laughs> of his partners actually pass as well? His dog. He's with his partner. Oh, good. Somebody here lost the younger male. Yeah, we have a nephew that passed. Okay, so if this is for you, was this passing also very quick? He was killed in Afghanistan. And I'm supposed to talk about somebody doing a very, can I be honest, really not cool honor. Like somebody did like a, like a memorial was not cool, or somebody said something that was not cool. Yeah. Or somebody said something that was completely inappropriate. Do you understand? No. Yeah. Okay, he's making me feel like, shrug it off. Like, no, no big deal. I hope this helps. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. We taped the earlier part of this show a few days ago, and we're back in studio with an update. Remember the two women in the audience who received a reading from John Edward? Well, it turned out their names are Tara and Colleen, and their deceased friend was a reality TV personality whose tragic death recently made news headlines. Now to our top story. A grand jury indicts the man accused of murdering a pregnant Food Network reality star and her husband 
on charges he dismembered their remains. The Food Network is in shock today over the murder of one of its former contestants. 38-year-old Christy was a contestant on season eight of Food Network star. Adding to the senseless tragedy, Christy was five months pregnant with her first child. JT and Christy Cobb were married just six months ago. The newlyweds were also expecting a baby. Their neighborhood handyman was arrested for their murders. Friends are still in shock. They remember JT as a loving, bigger-than-life guy who would go out of his way to help others. Christy the same. Well, after the show ended, this is what Tara and Colleen had to say about their reading. Did this make headlines? Yes. When John Edwards started talking about fire and burning, I knew it was my friend and her husband that he was probably speaking about. She and her husband were murdered. They're telling me to talk to you about something SK. There's a younger female reference that they want me to talk about. We could not think of the SK name, and I don't know why, because their unborn daughter, they named her Skylar. You know, that was the clincher. I wasn't surprised that our friend came through. She's a real spitfire. The couple had just gotten married in October, and I was also at their wedding. When I hear this information, it, it made me feel good that your friend is having a voice as they've passed on. Our friend and her husband were great people. We'll miss them both. Now switching gears slightly, remember Angela and Jenny from earlier in the show? Jenny agreed on stage to take a polygraph test to help clear her name after admittedly flip-flopping her stories to authorities in the double murder of her in-laws. Her husband, Matt, ended up sentenced to prison for two life sentences. So after the show, I flew polygraph examiner and former FBI profiler Jack Tremarco to Jenny's hometown to administer the test. That is when things took a sharp turn. Take a look. I've been here uh, almost two hours now, and I've been waiting for Jenny. I've been advised that uh, Jenny is uh, reluctant to take the polygraph examination. In fact, she's on some level refused to get into a car to uh, travel out here to meet me. Well, I know Angela wanted the results very badly, and Angela is joining us on the phone to share her thoughts on what happened. Uh, you just watched uh, the update that we just played, correct? Yes. Uh, what's your reaction? I'm really not surprised that she didn't take it. And I really was surprised she even agreed to take it in the first place. Well, she did agree to take it, and of course, we offered to provide it to her here. Um, she declined that, so we offered to arrange for someone to provide it to her there. I agreed to fly Jack Tremarco there to provide the test over the weekend. Uh, so there would be uh, absolutely no question of the top resource available. Uh, she wasted our time and resources, and um, I've often said, People who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. I think this does not speak well uh, for her position. And uh, you'll just have to draw your own conclusions from that. Well, thank you for trying. I really appreciate it. Well, we're going to continue to follow this situation and see if we can uh, bring some further clarity to it. But I wanted to give you the update because I knew you were standing by to hear what was going on. Yes, thank you so much. Angela, thank you. Well, I want to thank all of my guests today, including psychic medium John Edwards. Log on to drphil.com. Share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter using hashtag drphil. We'll see you tomorrow.